God, everybody, you're welcome to Refreshing Time this beautiful Thursday afternoon with Little Red, Rosie, Noah. I welcome you to Refreshing Time today. On Refreshing Time, I'm equipping you with the Word of God. I am inspiring lives. I am impacting lives so that they could influence their families, their society, their nations all around the world. And so if you are here watching me live on Facebook or you're watching me live on YouTube, I welcome you to my um, program today. Today is episode number 20. Episode 20 continues with the Destiny Partner Series. We've been looking at Destiny South. And we'll be focusing in on either your finding process, finding your help meet, or finding that wife. And so if you're a woman watching me today, we all aspire to be this woman who has all these beautiful qualities in her. And if you're a man, that's what you're looking out for, and the woman that you are believing God for, for your life. And if you're already married, listen to me, sir, listen to me, ma'am. If you're already married, as a woman, I aspire to be this woman who has these qualities to be a blessing to your husband and a blessing to your house. And if you are um, a man watching this, you're already married, pray to God that your wife develop some of these abilities and some of these qualities so that she can be a blessing to you. And so God bless you for coming uh, and joining me um, today on episode number 20. Let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we commit today's program into your hands. Let every listener, every hearer be blessed. Let the word of God come alive. Holy Spirit, breathe on this word. Let it take root in the heart of the listeners. Let it change lives. Let it transform lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray in thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Uh, so, episode number 20, Destiny Spouse, The Finding Process, part number three. If you've missed any of the episodes in this Destiny Partner series, I will encourage you, go back to my episodes. You can Pick it from episode 17, 18, and 19, if you've missed any aspect of it, because we've been treating um, the 15 qualities or characteristics of an Easter, if you're not looking for your help me. And so we started by building the foundation from episode 17, episode 18, and 19. Today, we are wrapping up the qualities that the woman should have so that she can be found by her destiny spouse, and also for the man to look out for in his finding process. Because we said in Proverbs 18, 22, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing. Whosoever finds a wife, if you find your ether, your help me, you find your treasure, you find your tome, a good thing, that thing that can be given, that gift that can pour it into your life. And so I'm encouraging you uh, to go back and watch the episode. If you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, share, like it, share with other people. Be a blessing to other people on your WhatsApp groups, WhatsApp platforms, Facebook groups, and let them know that we have a good word that we're teaching this current generation, you know, to be able to learn and to be able to um, develop so that we can be Christians living a victorious Christian life, even in our marriages. Glory be to God. Let's go right into it. So today we are continuing from where we left off in episode 19. We are looking at quality number 10. Quality number 10. To look out for in your destiny spouse. Quality number 10. You the man watching me today. These are some areas you need to pay attention to. In addition to what we've discussed before. Quality number 10 is to look out for the financial management skills of this wife-to-be. Yes. You want to know her way of thinking. You want to know how she sees well. You want to see how she understands budgeting, spending, saving, investing. All these things are very important. These are things that you need to look out for. You observe the woman or even the man. You observe and make sure you are seeing how they are handling these things. And then after you've done your good observations, you want to get to the point of having a conversation with this person. If it's something you like, 
Praise God. And if there's something you don't like, you want to talk about it. But remember from the beginning, you cannot go into marriage thinking that you are going to change anybody. You are not going to go there and change anyone. They form their character over years. It is God who can change that spouse. It is God who can change that woman or that man. Don't go in with the idea that I'm going to, you know, make sure I train them to be like me. It doesn't work like that. Yes, that's compromise. Yes, you're going to work on it as you move together on this journey called marriage. But you must understand that it's not always going to be your way. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. I, I believe in God with you that you will do the right thing looking for this particular skill set in the woman. Financial management skills. When I counsel people, whether it's premarital counseling or postmarital counseling, you realize that one of the key areas that people are having problems with is finances. My perception of how to handle money, my perception of wealth, my perception of anything connected to money um, might be different than yours. So let's break it down. The first question I want you to ask, is this woman you want to marry or this woman you already married to, is she a good steward of resources? I learned this from Jesus. Jesus is very keen on us being good stewards. If you are a good steward of God's resources, it translates even into money. If you are not a good steward, you will misuse, you will waste the resources that God commits into your hand. You are asking, is she good with money? How does she spend her money? I remember when I was younger, not now, younger, that's my early 20s, when I got upset, I want to go window shopping. I just want to, I'm, I'm not necessarily buying, but I just felt like I had to relieve that pressure. If I'm upset about something or, you know, however I'm feeling, I just walk through the mall and be looking at the stores and be making a note of what's on sale and what's not and just look through. Probably I might, I might get one thing, but I don't go spending my money because I'm upset. No, I just walk and just watch and relieve my mind. Praise God. Now, if if, I, if it's really something emotional, then I just grab my chocolate, my milk chocolate, and just munch on it. I'm just interested that way. Listen, every woman is different. But is she good with money? I have been of the mindset, understanding what budgeting is. I've been budgeting from a very young age. I mean, my mid-20s, you know, all the way 30s, 40s, and up. I have been keen on budgeting. You need to understand as a man and a woman that you have to budget. You have to know how to manage your finances. Now, in every marriage, I said in episode 19, finances, communication, and sex are the three pillars, in addition to everything else that goes into marriage, that if not proper care is not taken or paid attention to, will destroy that marriage or destroy that relationship. Praise God. And so you are asking, is she wise with money? Is she a spender? Is she a waster? Is she a saver? Is she an investor? Does she have an investment kind of mindset? What is her knowledge on wealth and money management? What are her ideologies when it comes to budgeting and spending money? Uh, can she be trusted with money? Can you trust her with your money, sir? If you can't trust her with your money, we got a problem over here. Because guess what? She is the homemaker. She's the one going to run your home. And so we have to pay attention to that aspect. Is she a thief? Is she a robber? Uh, can she steal from you? Now, I have had stories of men who say, listen, uh, I was dating this woman and she come over or maybe I'm married to this woman and anytime I hang my clothes, she's going through my pocket looking for money. She's going through my wallet looking for money. Wow. Okay. So I cannot relate to that kind of a woman because I, I'm, that's not my habit. That's, my, that's not my style. So um, think about it. If you study this person and you realize that financially they are not strong, we need to talk about what is a budget. I believe every human being must understand how to budget. For example, you're working, you make $5,000 a month. You know, I'm giving you a visual. Visualize a big um, circle or pie chart, if you want to think about it that way. And maybe divide it into different parts, like an orange. Cut it into nine different parts. Now, every aspect is going to signify an area of your life that you need to put money into. So, for example, one aspect of it, when you make money, you earn money, whether it's a business or a job, you want to say, okay, $5,000, maybe $2,000 goes into my rent or my mortgage. That's where I'm going to put my, my money. The other piece is for utilities. 
this is where I'm going to put money towards my utilities. The other piece is towards uh, maybe what? Your educational pursuit, another piece for your personal development, another piece for recreation, another piece for, for um, auto maintenance, other piece for uh, children, whatever. Like, divide it according to the way your life is. And every month you budget and you make sure that you've assigned some dollar amount, pound amount, euro amount, whatever your currency is, you put them into those categories. These, these are areas where you are putting money and save investment. You mention it. It kind of puts you on a disciplined path to know how to use money so you don't go wasting money. So you don't go use the money that you have not a plan to use. Some of us don't do that. We get paid, we dip our hand in the money, we put our hand in the bank account and, or the card, and we swipe, we scan, we just spend, 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 spend. And we're like, oops, we didn't even die, we didn't pay no offering, we didn't do nothing. Okay, no charge up at work. So I want you, to, as a man or as a woman, your financial management skills is critical because you're going to be building a home with a husband. And then later you're probably going to be blessed with children. How are you going to take off those children if you cannot handle your finances? How are you going to put food on the table? How are you going to put a roof over your head? So in this episode 20, we're looking at today, looking at the qualities of your wife or the woman you want to marry. Just make sure you are taking in her financial management skills. Is she a giver? Is she a spender? Is she a waster? I believe that as a man and a woman, when you come together and realize maybe the man is better with money or the woman is better with money, it's between both of you. You have to have that understanding. Say, so you know what? You be the one managing the account. You be the one managing the finances because you're better. Because left with me alone, I'll go spend the money. That is a point of understanding between both of you. If you understand each other, it's easy to manage it that way. But if not, there's always going to be a bone of contention. A lot of marriages are filled because of finances. The woman spent all his money. The man spent all her money. It's all kinds of stuff. People start hiding money, hiding things, and can't even be transparent. But in your final process, whosoever finds a wife, in your final process, observe the way she manages money. When you go out with her on a date, when you are courting her, how does she spend the money? Is she generous with her money? Is she covering you? So with a man, likewise. And so your financial management skills is an area that you don't want to play with when it comes to to mar and marriage. You need the wisdom of God. If you're not good with money right now, as I'm talking, begin to have a, mind, uh, a mindset where you deal with a budget and limit yourself. Have an account that you keep money in that you can't touch, savings account or checking account, however, whatever system you have in place that enables you to control your use of money. I'm not, I'm the kind of person I have to carry cash. I don't, you know, once in a little while. <laughs> Some people are like that. Some people rely on their cards, a little cash, a little ca whatever it is. Some people, when they have cash, they spend it and they cannot account for it. Okay? If you are like, some of us would like to keep track of everything we spend. We like to use a card. We like to, you know, go back and check our accounts and see where we spend the money. Because sometimes you lose your receipts anyway. What am I saying? You don't want to be in a relationship that is broken because of finance. Because, you know, an aspect of finance is being a good steward is some people are not transparent and they are not honest. You're going to observe that during your course of faith. You're going to observe that if you're married to that woman or that man. But because we're talking about the woman, I want you, the man, to pay attention to how she's spending her money. Is she invested it or she's invested it in her body? Hey, and I, I, I need to look good. I'm not saying as a woman you shouldn't look good. You should. But she's spending the bulk of her money on her physique. Do you remember Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman, how she went out, considered the field, invested in it, bought it, she was trading, she was doing something that multiplied her money. And so if you're not doing anything to multiply that money or having any means necessary to make that money and she's just spending, 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 sir, you are in trouble. Your future home is in trouble. I'm telling you. Unless you guys have a conversation and you talk about how you think your money should be spent and managed in your home. Very critical, very critical information. Point number 11. Point number 11. When you have met that woman, when you have met that woman, there is something that is very important that you should do. And I tell a lot of people, your first impressions of people, what, what you perceive, what you see, what you observe, uh, will only be amplified when you get into marriage. <laughs> <laughs> don't think, oh, when I get married or when I marry her, it might be better. I can't influence it. You know, there are some people, they're flexible, they're teachable, they're they like a sponge.
sponge. They can soak in when you pour into them. They could become a better version of themselves. However, that doesn't apply to everybody. Yeah. So, point number 11, personal hygiene. Yeah, we're going there today. You know, how does she keep herself? How does she keep her hair? Her nails? Her body? Does she have a body odor? When you talk to her, does she have a mouth odor? she brushing her teeth? How is the oral hygiene? Is she clean? <laughs> you know, is she conscious of dirt, germs, her surroundings has to be clean? How does she handle it? Does she keep a clean room, a clean kitchen, a clean house? Okay. Some men are too nice because you feel like, well, if I draw her attention to it, I will embarrass her. And vice versa for women. Okay, that applies to the men as well. But you don't want to be in a position where you think, oh, well, maybe she doesn't know, so let me let her know. Some women might take offense. You have to find a nice way, a wise way to tell a woman your personal hygiene does not pass the test. You probably have to brush your teeth, do something about your oral hygiene, do something about about your body. Or you sweat a lot, use deodorant, okay? Use something on you that will make you refresh and make you look good. The personal hygiene of this person is important. If you marry a woman, she doesn't like taking a bath. She doesn't like taking a bath. She goes for two days, hasn't taken a bath. Okay, so you are in trouble. Woman, if you're going for days without taking a bath, I don't know how that marriage bed is going to be like. <laughs> because, you know, you can't be cooking, running around, running errands, sweating, working, doing that, and then not take a bath. And not, and not smell and feel clean. What do we say? We say cleanliness is next to what godliness. Are you clean as a woman? Because that sexual aspect of your marriage, that intimacy aspect of your marriage is going to be hinged on your cleanliness. If you're not clean, no man is going to want to have sexual intercourse with you. When you're married to him, he's going to turn his nose the other direction. Take some bath. Wash down. You're going to cook in the kitchen, your hair, all kinds of food stuff, and you're going to put it on the bed on the pillow next to the nose of the man. Smell it. <laughs> Listen, women, let's learn how to keep ourselves clean. So for the men watching me, you're looking for a woman to marry her after keep her out, you know, out keep, the way she keeps her body, the way she smells, it's important. If you don't like it, please bring it to her attention, vice versa for, for a man. You know the reason why a lot of women out here, you have not found your destiny spouse yet? Have you asked yourself, how do I carry myself? Do I look good? Do I look clean? You know, some women are already married, and the moment they got married, oh, they just don't feel like keeping themselves good and looking clean anymore. They want to look anyhow. Their hair is disheveled, walking around the house. You know, your home looks like Tarzan can, go, can get hurt in there. You know, listen to me. Come on, come on, woman, listen. The fact that you're married doesn't mean you shouldn't look good. You should look good. You should look presentable. You should continue to look attractive to your man. And your personal hygiene is important. Don't be all kind of like, you know, not there with your hygiene because it's going to impact whether somebody's going to look at you approach you, ask you to go out with you, or even take you to the next level of marrying you. So personal hygiene, very critical, both for the man and woman, but because we're treating the qualities of a woman, I am saying with the women, let's be clean. Keep a clean underwear, keep a clean bra, keep clean clothes, look clean, look presentable. I always tell people, look presentable, look apart. Personal hygiene is very important. Point number 12, point number 12, health and fitness. You are a woman out here. Maybe you're like me. I'm not the kind of person to hit the gym, okay? It's a struggle. Struggle is real, okay? The best I can do is I can walk the park. I can walk an hour. You know, I can do fast walking, slow walking. I can walk. We get in there. You get in there. Don't come in here judging. We'll get in there. I want to get to the point where I can hit those treadmills and do all the additional workout stuff in the gym. But what am I saying? If you meet a woman and she is not the fitness kind of person, and you know that this woman, you need to be fit. Maybe, you know, we have slim women, we have chubby women, we have women who are sick, you know, whatever you are, as long as you are comfortable in your skin as a woman, as long as you are healthy, it doesn't matter the size. If you are healthy, that is what matters. So as a man, maybe your taste is a slim woman or somebody who's sick or chubby or big, however you want it, suits your fancy. But what am I saying? Make sure that you are observing this woman. Is she fit? Does she 
she does she keep a fit life? Is she lazy? She doesn't care about the way she looks. If she doesn't care about the way she looks now before you marry her, she ain't going to care about it when you marry her. Believe you me, it will take the grace of God, hallelujah, before she can say, you know what, maybe I'm having a reality check. I need to be healthy. I need to keep fit. Maybe your health crisis may hit. And then the doctor says, hey, you need to keep fit or you're going to the grave. Then they're like, women, women start hitting the gym. But nowadays in our generation, a lot of women want to look good. They, don't, they want to look nice. If you're married, maybe you've had kids. The fact that you've had kids doesn't even let yourself go. If you don't make yourself attractive, if you don't look good, that man of yours is going to be tempted by that slim, fine-looking one down that down the street. The one in the office looking at the time. So what am I telling you? I'm not saying it's right for men to cheat a woman. I'm not saying it's right for men to look the other way and commit fornication or adultery or whatever you want to call it. But I'm just saying as a woman, you must be conscious of your fitness. Be fit. Look good. Look good for your husband, whether you're married or whether you were dating. Look good for that 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 man that you're hoping to get married to. Sir, what is her health like? Does the woman have health problems? Oh yes, we went there today. Does the woman have health problems? How does that, how is her mental health today? You know, a lot of people don't talk about mental health, but you would know the mental health of a woman, not every time, but observe the way she handles things when she's under pressure, when is she easily depressed, is she easily stressed out, uh, if she can take anything mentally or emotionally, how is she behaving, what is her mental health? Very important. You have to look at the health of the woman. You know, I always tell people, we depend on the church you go to, they may ask you to do a medical check. Um, a wellness checkup even before you get married because they want to make sure you don't have any sicknesses hidden in the system that you are not you are not telling the man or telling the woman we need to know so that that person can make an informed decision if I want to marry somebody who's a sickler if I, I want to marry somebody with this kind of genetic if I want to marry somebody with this kind of blood type listen all those things are important sir before you get married have a medical checkup people have gotten married to people and found out they have certain diseases they're hiding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't tell you. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry, ma'am. You found out late. Why? Because we didn't do our due diligence from the beginning before we got married. It's different that you already married and, the, and your spouse has developed some kind of a sickness or disease. We're in the marriage, for better for worse, sickness and health. So, yes, pursue the faith of God as for divine healing. But, yes, also seek healing from medical doctors. Science is good. It was God who created all these things. He blessed the herbs of the field for medicinal value. He blessed what we're using. And so make sure that you know the health of this person you are going to marry. If if maybe, for example, you're about to marry a woman and she, and you, she has to let you know, I'm not capable of giving birth. Are you willing to marry me? Are you willing that if we get married and I can't give birth biologically, you know, naturally, maybe we can adopt a child or some children. You, sh as a woman, you should be able to tell the husband that many women have committed abortions upon abortions, upon abortions to the point they ain't got no womb to carry babies. Yet they will not tell the man. They will deceive the man, make him think everything is okay. And once they get into the marriage, the man, the man is going to have a rude awakening. Oh, oops. So don't you think the deception with which we enter that marriage will deceive the man and not let him know that you don't have the ability to bear children? Don't you think it could be grounds for him to look the other direction? I'm not saying he's supposed to, but you deceive him from the very beginning. That marriage was built on deception. What about the man? You know you are impotent. You know you can do nothing. You know you have a problem. You probably have a low sperm count from your from your uh, medical checks checkups and whatnot. Let the woman know if she has the faith to believe with you and believe God for God to touch and heal you and work it out great. If she ha if she's great and she said, you know what, I'm still gonna marry you and we'll believe God whether we have our own children or whether we adopt. That's okay. My point is, a man and a woman, give the other person the benefit of a doubt. Give the other person enough information about yourself to make an informed decision. Marriage is a long journey. Don't let us get in here and you say, oops, I'm sorry, I, I, I should have told you. Should have, could have, would have, would have been too late by that time. And if you're not married to a level-headed person, they might walk and leave you. Yes. We've seen it happen over and over again. And so it's important. Your health and your fitness is important. This woman you want to marry, what are her eating habits? Is she is she is she uh, a, a gluten? She just eats and eats and eats and eats and eats till she's sick. 
you know. She wants to eat everything. You know how we say some people eat with their eyes. Everything they see, they want to eat. Everything they see, they want to munch on. You know, when she's eating, it's just, it's not even attractive. You know, so yeah, take that woman out. Take her on a date. Take her to a restaurant. Let's see her table manners. Let's see if she has some table manners. Let's see how she eats. You have to look at all that. What are the kind of food she eats? Is she the healthy type or she's eating junk all the time? Same with a man. You need to know these things. Don't wait till you get married and say, I never knew that this is the kind of way she eats or this is the kind of food she likes. If you go marry a woman who is health conscious, start get ready. You're going to be eating healthy all your life. Your meals, your menu. I see people people cooking you all kinds of healthy meals, and you're like, I don't know what this is. Can you help me a little bit with some traditional dishes here and there, right? So it's important. You know, different races eat different things. Yes, Caucasians and Blacks, um, Latino, whatever, whatever you are, we all eat nations, different tribes, different cultures. And so if you're marrying somebody, ask you. Can I marry this person and am I willing to eat this kind of food? Maybe you're a man marrying the woman and you know you the man can cook and you know she's the one going to be cooking for you. Would you be okay with the kind of thing she's going to be feeding you with? Okay. Don't say we didn't talk about it. We're talking about it here on Destiny Spouse, the final process is episode 20. If you just joined, we are looking at the qualities of the woman. So we just finished point number 12. Quality number 12, what is the health and fitness like? Point number 13 that you need to look out for, sir, goes for men and women too, but because we're talking about the woman that helped me, we want to look at the woman's integrity, the woman's reputation, her commitment, her loyalty. Is she faithful? Is she loyal? Is she ethical? Does she, she make ethical decisions? Like, is she ethical in her decision making and the way she carries herself? It's important. Is her word her bond? Can you trust her? If she says, I'm going to do A, we she do A. Or she'll do otherwise. Does she deliver on what she is committed to? Can she be trusted? What kind of reputation does she have in her family, among her friends, and in the community? You know, there are some people, when you go into their community, you will not say a good thing about them. I'm not saying that is true. I believe, like, this is what I tell people. I believe that uh, to every story, it's what she said what he said and what the truth really is. There are three sides to a story. I don't believe, you know, just taking one person's side of a story. It doesn't work like that. I have been in a place and a position and also seen in other people where people have lied on them, where people have falsely accused them, where people just want to destroy people's reputation. So that cannot necessarily be true. But listen, at least find out for yourself. Maybe everybody in the neighborhood knows that this one, she's been used by every man, every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the community. She's promiscuous. Everybody knows from her high school to, to tertiary to church to everywhere. They know this one can't keep her legs closed. Oh, God help us. She can't keep her, she can't keep her legs closed. She's everywhere. Do your background check. Find out the kind of woman it is. Because if not, you end up dating or courting her or marrying her, and you all these stories start coming up, and then you you feel some kind of way as a man. Now I'm not saying the woman should tell you, hey, while we're dating, sir, you know I've dated a hundred men, I've slept with two hundred men. Now no man would want to marry you, and I'm not saying deceive the men either. But sir, do your homework. That's what I'm say. I'm just gonna leave it right there. Do your homework. Maybe you don't care, you don't mind. There are people who have married prostitutes, and these people have become changed, born again, they're living good lives, they're walking the straight and narrow, that was their past, you can't use it against them, but it's a matter of preference and choice, what do you want? If you're okay with it, then go with it, you know? Yes, yeah, some men, everybody knows that man is a womanizer, everybody knows he can't zip up his pants, everybody knows that he's in his skirt, he's going to chase after it. Woman, you know before you say yes to that man, when you get married, it's only going to get worse. Don't think, oh, because I'm the one he found, and once I get married, he's going to stop chasing women. If he was chasing before he got married, he's still going to chase them after you're married. In fact, he's going to get worse. He's going to get a PhD in womanizing. <laughs> it takes the grace of God. It takes divine intervention. It takes what well, deliverance for this person to have their head screwed on straight, that they know they're doing the right thing. So as a, as a woman, your integrity, your reputation matters. 
Can people trust you? Can the man find out that, listen, this woman you're going to marry, she's a committed person, whatever she says, she does it, you can trust her, she has a good reputation. Do your homework. Quality number 13, the integrity of the woman matters, her reputation matters. Validate things for yourself. Know what her friends are saying, because I've seen where people want to destroy their friends because they want the man, and say, if I can destroy it to the man, then the man will not follow her and rather come and pursue me. That's evil. You don't want to do that. Praise God. You don't want to do that. It's very important. Now, point number 14. Point number 14. Very critical that we need to look at. Point number 14. You need to ask yourself the question, as you see this woman, as you observe her, whether you are married to her or about to get married, what is her worldview? I teach an aspect of worldview a little bit, a little bit. Um, in our Bible school, a little bit in one of the courses that I teach. We have Christian apologetics, but we treat all kinds of worldviews in. But I want to zoom in and help somebody. So when we talk about the worldview, you're talking about your ideology. You know, when it comes to the world and the way the world operates and the systems of the world and, and things that we are all plugged into and operate in our environment and whatnot, some people, their ideology is in la-la land. I'm sorry, you cannot and have an intelligent conversation with them, their head is somewhere else. Their worldview of things is somewhere else. Their worldview, their religious worldview is different. You know, their financial worldview is different. The way they see and view the world, the way they see families and culture is different. Like, you know very well that you are not compatible with this person. Because it's going to end up in communication, in your conversation. And if you don't take every time you have a conversation with this person, because they have a different worldview, you guys are going to end up having arguments. You're going to end up quarreling. You're going to end up, you know, having, you know, divergent views. And it's never peaceful when you have a conversation about one thing. Your worldview about things are different. What are, you, are the systems of this world that you can identify with? Can she identify with the same thing? What is a religious worldview? Does she think all paths lead, lead to God? That is not only Christianity. That is not only this. And you have a different worldview. You cannot go and, you know, yes, you can share your worldview with her and she can do that vice versa. It's a matter of whether you guys are willing to come to an agreement and see one thing or some common or some similar or familiar things together. If not, and the person is just a philosopher in his own little world, woman, you are in trouble. Sir, you are in trouble if that's the woman for you. It's important. Don't ever sit and think, well, it's her worldview. doesn't matter. It does matter. Because you're not only going to marry the physique, the physical aspect of the woman. You're going to have to have conversations where you got to have to reason together, to think together, and, you know, navigate life together with her. And if, if your worldview is so divergent, it's so on total different spectrums in life, it could be a red flag because you never see eye to eye on anything. Okay. Point number 15. Point in your love language as a man. When you're looking for your either woman, have you even identified what your own love language is? Who don't even know what a love language is? Let me refresh your memory. Number one, there are five love languages. Some people have more than five. I'm just sticking to five for now. There are some people, the words of affirmation is how they express how they love you or how they receive love. The one who say, oh, I love you. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so this. When you talk to them and communicate your love, they appreciate that more than anything else. That means they, they are more of the words of affirmation kind of a woman. If she's that kind of woman, give her what she wants. And words of affirmation is what makes her happy. Why are you busy giving her, buying her gift? That she, she can't even... Doesn't even care about it. I'm not saying women don't care about gifts, but give her what she values. Number two, some women, their love language is quality time. Can you spend a quality time talking to me? Can you spend a quality time taking me out? Can you spend a quality time going on a stroll with me, going on a ride with me? Can you spend quality time? Let's go for vacation. This is her love language. If you don't know that that's her, that's her love language, then you're feeding her something else and giving her something else she will never appreciate it or she might come across as she's ungrateful. But you're not speaking her language. So observe it. Ask. If you don't know, if you, if you, if you don't know it's not that obvious, ask her. What's your love language? How do, how do you receive love and how do you express love? 
Okay, it's important. Number the third love language is physical touch. There are some people who are very touchy. They like to touch you. They would like to hug you. They want to sit on you. They want to hug you like they are the touchy feely kind of person. They want to rub your back. Want to rub your hair. If she's that kind of woman, give it to her. That's your wife. When you get married, that's what she's expecting from you. And you know the interesting thing is it goes the same for men. If you're a woman and you you are the 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 um, physical touch kind of person, and the man is not, he will find you so annoying. <laughs> he will find like, listen, I don't, I'm not into this whole public display of affection. I call it PDA. I'm not into that. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, stop embarrassing you. I don't like that. Oh, ooh. like listen, you have to know the love language of your destiny spouse. If he's not touchy feely, don't try to make him to be. You're going to feel so miserable, it's not even going to be funny. But as a man, before you marry her, if you run out, that's how she is. Yes, hold her hand, hug her, rub her back, show affection to her, let her know that you are showing her love. And I can tell you that woman will appreciate you more than ever. The fourth love language that you need to ask yourself, is this woman the type of woman who appreciates acts of service? Acts of service. You know, she appreciates you. Yes, the man took out the trash. He brought me a cold drink. He did something for me. You know, some, somebody who is handy, they're doing things to, to be a blessing to you. That's the kind of husband I have. Acts of service. This is love language. You know, he's dominant. So maybe, maybe you don't have that. Maybe with a woman, that's what she appreciates more. I was, it was okay for me if you ask us. I mean, it's great any time of the day. But it wasn't like my top top priority. I had to mature in life. I had to go to a certain point and be like, hmm. I see maturity of kids in the family. Your parents are like, ooh, ask some service. It just it depends. Some people may mature into it. They may develop stronger in some of these acts, uh, these love languages as they grow, as they mature, as they go through different phases of life. Praise that. So ask some service. If that's her love language, sir, you are you are on it day on day and night. Number five, um, love language you want to look at is receiving gifts. Now somebody will say, who doesn't like a gift? Well, you can't generalize it for everybody. It's not everybody who is into gift, gift, give, give me, give me, give me, give me. No. There are some women, they love gifts. They love when you give them flowers. They love when you give them a plant. They're going to water that plant, take out that plant. They like a gift. They like a nice bag, clothes, shoes, makeup, hair, this, that. They want you to keep giving money, this. That's their love language. That's what they like. You know? And as much as I would appreciate that gift, I am not the kind of receiving gifts all the time. That's not my predominant. That's not my strong love language. If I get a gift, praise God, wonderful. God bless you. Praise God. So, so it's different for every woman. Now, sir, the fact that she wants gifts doesn't mean go and spend all your money, waste all your money because she likes gifts. You cannot buy a woman's love with giving her gifts. Now, for those men out there who think, listen, I'm going to give her everything and I'll buy this expensive thing, and you are introducing her to a certain level, a certain taste. Once she gets used to it and you don't continue it in the marriage, she's going to call you fake. She's going to say that you did that because you just wanted to get with me. You just wanted to marry me. That's why you did all those things. But in reality, you are not that kind of a man. Why don't you give me gifts anymore? You even forget my birthday. You even forget my anniversary. You don't give me no gifts whatsoever. Okay, sir. Be careful what you introduce the woman to. Don't let her get a hint on something that you cannot continue. Don't start what you cannot finish with the woman. So it's important. It's critical to know the woman's love language. Again, five of them. Words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of what service, and receiving or giving gifts. Know what the woman's love language is. I can tell you a lot of problems in marriages. If we know each other's love language, we wouldn't have to struggle so much. We wouldn't have to worry so much. We wouldn't have to, to get into all kinds of confusion, all kind of uh, uh, neglect. Somebody feels neglected. Somebody feels like, I don't get love. I don't feel love. And the matter, but I'm not showing you love. Well, how are you showing it? Is it the way she wants to be receiving love or the way she wants you to give her love? And so find out what the woman's love language is. Very important, very critical. Our next point. So then we, we, I started with, what, 10 points today. We started with financial, her financial skills, her personal hygiene, um, her health and fitness, 
We look at her integrity, reputation as a person. We look at her worldview. We just look at the five love languages. And last but not least, let's look at her etiquette. Etiquette. What is this woman's etiquette? It's very important. Why? Because etiquette is everything. There is nothing as annoying or nothing as embarrassing when you are with somebody who does not have common etiquette. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen. You know, I was blessed to go to a high school that really took time to teach you etiquette as a woman. Okay. It's one of the one of the best girls' high schools in in in, in Ghana. Like that's where you know, as part of my life up there and part of my life I grew up in the US. So I remember those high school days and not that I didn't learn etiquette from home. My mom taught us good etiquette, believe me. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't have survived in high school. You know, my mom taught us good etiquette, good manners, you know. Um you and, and you know etiquette is also hinged on culture and setting you know certain places of the world. Let's say the Asian culture is very different when it comes to etiquette. Um, the Western culture is very different when it comes to etiquette. The African culture, believe you me, is very different when it comes to etiquette. You know, so whoever you are going to marry, or even the African American culture, you know, Latina culture, all these different races, different tribes, different nations, and whatnot, everybody has their own type of etiquette. Now, there's common etiquette or common chemistry, um that that everybody, at least, we expecting you to know. You know, so let me break it down. Maybe I would say etiquette when it comes to, you know, interaction with people. You know, there are some people, they don't have common courtesy or etiquette when it comes to communication. You're always jumping in, cutting you off, cutting you off, cutting you off, cutting you off. You never have a say so or never get to finish what you have to say. You're always cutting in, you're always budging in, you're always cutting people off. Some of them say that you don't have good manners, you know, you don't have good etiquette when it comes to the way you are interacting, the way you are communicating. There may be some nonverbal etiquette. Is a person always biting their fingers, picking their nose? Oh, yeah, I went there. <laughs> like, it's bad. Like, they have bad manners. They, 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 they burp or they, you know, they, they are belching and they don't even say, excuse me. They are farting. They don't say, excuse me. They don't, they don't just, you know, step away for a little bit or whatever. Like, their manners, their etiquette is horrible. It's horrible. You observe this person, you take them out to eat, and they're chewing with their mouth open. Now, now they're just chewing. Their mouth are all open all over the place. Can't keep, can't eat nicely without making all kinds of noise and, and eating all nasty. Like, listen now. Ooh, table manners, table etiquette. Woman, man. It goes both ways, I'm telling when it comes to etiquette. Like, for me, it's a big deal for me. Your etiquette, your manners, it's a, it's a big deal for me. Because... For me, I feel embarrassed if you are with me and your manners are in la la land. That's what I'm going to call it. You don't have good manners. You don't have good table manners. You don't have manners when you are interacting with people. You don't have manners as you carry yourself, as you communicate. It's a, it's a problem. For some other people, they don't care. They can overlook it. They don't care the manners this woman has. Maybe you don't. What if you're a man and you're a corporate man? Whatever you're a man, you're a man in ministry. Or whatever it is, and you entertain people, you have to host people, you have to interact with people of different calibers, and your wife has no etiquette, no manners. She's going to embarrass you anytime you have to take her anywhere on any social event or any of your meetings or whatever it is. You will feel very embarrassed. So, choosing that either, choosing that out choosing that woman. Ask yourself that she possess the quality, that she have the etiquette that I mean she doesn't. Some women are willing to learn if you can teach them. They are willing to learn. When she sits down, if she's sitting down with her legs wide open, she can't sit on the leg. She, you know, they don't have all those things that you the men are embarrassed. Like so we're in public. You can't. Looking at you, you're like, you know, like this she doesn't get it. She sits anyhow. She walks anyhow. She's talking anyhow. She's She's cussing. She's. I think I've said enough on etiquette with her male. Nobody's perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are a lot of etiquette maybe I even need to learn and grow into. But at least the basics of it, the basics of it, that makes you a decent human being. Decent human being. You know? Because if you don't talk about it, 
if if it's something you cannot do with and you marry them, it's going to get on your last nerve every single time. And it's going to be like you're trying to correct her and she doesn't see why you're trying to correct her. That's how I've always been. Ah, that's how I am. You don't can't, you can't tell me this, you can't tell me that. You guys will be budging heads, you guys will be arguing just about etiquette. Because your etiquette, the mannerisms, your manners are out of this world. They're out of whack. Nobody wants to deal with you. And, you know, so these are some of the things I want you to pay attention to when it comes. We look at seven different qualities in addition. So we are technically looking at 16. We've looked at 16 different qualities of your either, of your woman, the woman you want to marry. Or as a wife, if you're watching, you're already married. We are all learning. We are not perfect. Praise God. We are not all not perfect. Like for me, one of my goals is I need to really hit the fitness department and, you know, work out more and do something more or whatever it is you know we all have to learn we all have to learn we're growing there's every season of your life and every aspect of your life that that will change or improve or you may compromise on or try to work on and to be better based or maybe your age the things you've been through in life your experiences where you are going new opportunities that god is bringing you it helps to develop your characteristics, your quality as a human being, not only for women, but also for men. I am not the same person I was when I was 18, 20, 21, 30, whatever, you know, 40, and on and on. I'm different. I'm improving. I'm getting better. Have I perfected it yet? Not yet. We're getting there, but so should you. Glory be to God. And so if you are married, don't say, well, I listen to Lady Red Rose, you know what? And she said a woman is supposed to have these qualities, and my wife doesn't have it. It's time to look for somebody else. I didn't say that. You can't go and replace a woman. <laughs> we are not replaceable like that. No. Praise God. But especially for those who are yet to get married, open your eyes, take all these factors into consideration, and observe the woman. Observe her for a while. Date a quarter for a while. And the things you don't like, bring it to the table and have a what? A mature conversation about it. If she's willing to compromise, if she's willing to improve, watch her do it. She's not faking it for a day or a week. Watch her do it. And the ones that she can't, ask yourself, can the 80-20 rule apply? She has 80% of the qualities I'm looking for. The other 20 is annoying, but I can deal with her. I can I can make do with her. And you believe God to change that man or that woman because without that, we are not going anywhere. Praise God. And so these are the qualities we're looking for um, in our is there, in our woman, as, as by the grace of God, we are looking, whosoever finds the wife, find that treasure. Find that treasury that's going to keep giving to you as a man. Find the woman that can compliment you. Find the woman that can make a good home. Every woman has a strength and she has a weakness. There are strengths and weaknesses. Make sure that the strength you're looking for in that woman is good enough to sustain you as a man and to sustain your home. And woman, by the right versa. Let's grow. Let's mature. Don't negate somebody because they don't have all these qualities we talked about. There's no one person who embodies everything. Yes, I know we're looking at a Proverbs 31 woman. Yes, I know we are looking at women who are, you know, in the Bible, like the Abigails and the Deborahs and whatnot. We are learning from our mothers of faith, but we are not perfect. We are all getting them. We are growing. So I believe that this Destiny Spouse series as a woman, you're helping me, you're either. I'm hoping that as a man, it's blessed you. And as a woman, we are learning and we are improving by the grace of God. Now listen, this will conclude episode number 20. Don't forget, today's episode 20 is Destiny Spouse, the finding process, part number three. Episode number 21. Mm, my God. Episode number 21. Listen, don't miss God willing this coming Tuesday, episode number 20. Let me tell you why. It's one of the aspects I teach in marriage for pastoral specialization of Bible school as well. But it's so important because episode 21, I want to share with the world, is going to deal with the background of your destiny spouse. You will come to find out that you marry into a house. You will come to understand bloodlines. You will come to understand cycles, blessings, and crisis, and family lines. It's so important. Like of everything we've talked about, the quality, the background is important. Episode 21, we deal with the background for both the woman, because we just finished with the woman, and also for the man after that, we'll look at the man. But episode 21 is so critical for Destiny Spouse, your family background. The background is important. We're going to go into the Word of God and look at some similar family backgrounds that the Scripture teaches and what was happening in those backgrounds. 
in those family lines and how it affected one generation to the other. And then you and I can sit up and analyze our own lives and say, wow, this is what's going on in my life right now. This is what's going on in our family right now. And I pray that that will be a blessing so that when you are marrying somebody, you marry into a family, you know what you're getting yourself into. Episode 21, don't miss it. Okay, next Tuesday here on Refreshing Time, with a destiny spouse, looking at family backgrounds or the background of a destiny spouse. So today, I thank you for coming. Today ends episode 20, um, the finding process, part number three. I pray that this was a blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. God richly bless you for coming.